Let's talk about GraphQL clients. Venger is a headless commerce platform. That means we expose GraphQL APIs. So when you're developing Venger applications, you usually need to do a lot of sending API requests and receiving the result and checking it, right? So what are we gonna use to send these API requests? Well, a GraphQL API request is just a HTTP call, right? There's nothing special about it. It's just a post request with a particular format of the body. So we can use the most simple tools available if we want to, for example, curl. Uh, we're going to send a query asking for the uh, ID and name of the first product. So let's try it out. So there's a curl command, press enter, and there we go. Here's the result. So if you want, you can just use curl. I don't think anyone actually does this, but it's possible. Let's take it one step further. So let's have something graphical like this, the, the GraphQL playground. We ship this in development mo mode. It's turned on by default. Now, this is really nice because not only it's graphical, but it takes advantage of the static typing of the GraphQL schema so that we can have a look through all the properties available and we can see the results. It's graphical, it's great. This is totally fine. There's a problem though. It, it has no good way of saving uh, lots of queries and mutations to a kind of a library or a collection. Uh, this is something that really comes in handy when you're doing a, a lot of serious development. You want a, a library on hand, you can just click through, organize it into folders, for example. And uh, if you want to do something with the order process, you already have your folder of queries and mutations to do with orders. And you can just open them up and you don't have to do much typing of new queries each time. So this is where um, more sophisticated tools come in. Uh, I think one of the original ones is Postman. But one that I've been using for many, many years is a tool called Insomnia. I discovered this six or seven years ago, I think. Uh, a colleague introduced it to me when I first started working with headless platforms. And it was fantastic. It was like it did everything you needed it to do. It was simple. It ran on the desktop. It was an Electron app, I believe. And the really cool thing was it was developed by one guy and I was following him on Indie Hackers. So Indie Hackers is a, a website where um, it's usually like one or sm one person or small teams like come up with tech products and then share their journey. And it was really cool, Insomnia. He was also sharing his revenue. He, he did have some kind of monetization for um, enterprise users, but for everyone else, it was free. It was like, it did everything you needed and, and it was totally great. That served me well for many, many years. It was made by this guy, Greg Shire. And then something happened. Greg says, so excited to finally be able to share that Insomnia is now part of Kong. And here's the blog post from 2019. And uh, it, you know, I thought, okay, great. No reason to think that everything's gonna go to shit. September 2023, so about four years later after this acquisition, Greg says, I'm finally internalizing the lesson that acquisitions are always terrible for the product. So long insomnia. And he links to a particular uh, issue on the insomnia repo, which is now part of the Kong organization. And it says changes in insomnia 8.0 regarding needing an account and local cloud data migration. So basically Kong have this tool, it's used by lots of people and they're trying to monetize, understandable, but there's different ways to do this, okay? And I'm gonna show you what happens. I, I've, as I say, I've been using Insomnia for many, many years. I've got lots of collections full of all the queries and mutations I've used to develop Venger since the very first commit. I've always used it to build Venger. And now let me show you what happens when I open up Insomnia to make a quick API call. First of all, it was never this slow before. And now to make an API call, I've got to log in. Now down here, you'll see you've got use the local scratch pad. So I can click on this, but then you get a crippled version of Insomnia, which does a fraction of the functionality that it actually did before. And then we have things like this. We've got a sign up and log in. We've got the star count there like Okay, good, it's got lots of stars. I'm one of them, but I don't need to see that in the UI of my app. So something's gone wrong. I do not begrudge Greg for 
selling insomnia to Kong. I hope he got a great deal and he totally deserves it. So at this point, I'm sure Greg is feeling a bit like Vito Corleone in that scene from The Godfather. Look on the mask, good my boy. The next challenge was, what am I going to use instead of insomnia? So a good place to start looking for alternatives was this Hacker News thread, which was all about this whole thing with insomnia being enshittified. Um, you might be thinking, well, why not use Postman? And I've not used Postman before, but actually when I did some research, it turns out that like Postman was the original template for enshittifying a, uh, an API. Every Postman alternative just follows the Postman playbook. It starts off as offline, gets funding or acquired, enables cloud sync for collaboration with teams, deprecates offline as a scratch pad, deletes the scratch pad. It's been like this for a decade now. Rings true. So I think Postman is a no-go if you want to avoid all of these issues. So what else? So there's a whole thread about a tool called Bruno. And I've actually, this is one of the ones that I've not used. And I don't know if anyone's got experience with this. Leave a comment if you've got opinions on it. Is it good? Is it got things that it's lacking? What's the deal? But it looks very nice. Open source, free, okay. They've got one-time payment. I like it. And then they've got a subscription base for organizations. That seems totally good, totally fair. Uh, they've got a manifesto. There's lots of positive feedback on the landing page. So check out Bruno, let me know what you think. But I'll tell you about some ones that I have tried. First of all is Hopscotch. Um, now Hopscotch is an open source product. It's a cloud-based client, but they do have a desktop app, which I'm not sure if it's stably released, but I did try it at one point. Now, the thing I found difficult with this is that first of all, they split REST and GraphQL requests into different tabs, which for me, this is like, I don't know why it's arbitrary. They're all just HTTP requests. The only thing that makes it GraphQL is it's got a particular body. Um, so I I don't know the history, but I feel maybe they added GraphQL on later and it was easy to just add it as a totally new module, a new section. But for me, that's like the first thing that I noticed, which, is, which was like, hmm, this doesn't make so much sense. But here we go, we're wiring it up to the Venger demo again. We'll run it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Query is too complex. We've got the hardened plugin enabled. Let's do uh, some options here and limit it to take three. This should work now. There we go. Oh, unknown argument option, option, options. So what's going on with the GraphQL introspection here? It's not, is it not doing introspection? Should we have introspection here? I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Let me try and just type it correctly and see if we can get a response. Here we go. So the other thing is the, the response is down here and the request is up here. I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like it should be like split vertically because requests are not wide. Re uh, re responses are not wide. Responses are long. So maybe you can configure that. I don't know. Um, anyway, Hopscotch, it looks cool. The, uh, the desktop client is built on Tori, which if you don't know, Tori is like an alternative to, um, Electron, but it's super small and, um, you know, the, the, the apps that it produces are very, very small. They use a fraction of the memory of the typical Electron app and it's built by a super cool team. So if you uh, see an app that is built on top of Tori, then you, you know it's gonna have pretty nice properties in terms of resource usage and performance. Anyway, little detour there. Um, Hopscotch, yeah, I think it needs more exploration, but it, it didn't, it didn't, click with me. So I was like, I still carried on my search and I went to then find Altair. So this is one that seems like it's been around for a while. It's open source. Um, I don't think it doesn't mention anything about monetization. They've got sponsors. So it looks like, you know, completely free open source, no business behind it. As far as I can tell, um, I think it's been around for a while. It's a desktop app which I kind of prefer this kind of software. I like it running locally on my desktop. It just feels better. Okay. So this is what it looks like. This is an electron app 
Um, the first thing is it kind of looks a bit old fashioned. And now that shouldn't matter too much. But anyway, that's just what strikes me, first of all. Uh, let's do a query. Let's get products. Now look, we've got introspection working nicely on this. So let's do the same query again, options. See, we don't even have to type it. I can just tab, I can just, I can just control tab it. Uh, let's take three. And again, let's get the item. Oh, this, this is interesting. It's got this fill all fields. I'll show you that in a second. So let's get items. Uh, so this is one thing that sometimes people uh, have as a criticism of working with GraphQL. We've got to like literally type out every property that we want to get. That's actually a benefit of GraphQL. But I can see that when you're just rapidly developing something and you want to just know like what fields are available, what do they look like when I get actual data in the response, then this is really cool. Actually, you can go and fill all fields. I just press enter and it fills them out for me. Now, these ones are underlined because they're actually uh, object types. So again, I could go to that and I could, oops, it's not an array. And I can say fill all fields. Oh, I can say fill all fields. Oh, have I broken it? Fill all fields, fill all fields. Good, that worked. Maybe I was doing something wrong. I don't know. Um, send request. Good. So here we get it all back. So that's really nice. So obviously it's got, it's got a lot of GraphQL specific features, which is great. Uh, it's a mature project. I did a, a bit of work with it this morning. Um, and it was, it's, it's nice, but it feels a bit clunky. Uh, some things were difficult. Like, so I want to save this to a collection, add to collection. Uh, let's create a new collection. We'll call it Avenger Dev. Okay, we call the query products save. Now, what one thing I, I very often do or did when I was using Insomnia was dupl duplicating a, a request. I don't see any way of doing that here. I can click this. I can only delete it. Um, like if I want to make a, another request with all the same settings and just start to edit it. So again, it may be, there's just stuff that I've not figured out yet. Cause I only started messing about with it this morning, but it's just not doing it for me. It's not, it's not recreating that joy of using insomnia back in the day, insomnia classic. So what else do we have? So another tool that I've come across is one called pathfinder. Um, this is built by the developers behind GraphBase, which is a platform for GraphQL applications. They do like caching and uh, metrics and other stuff. We have an integration for Venger in the infrastructure section. Anyway, they uh, really heavily into the GraphQL uh, ecosystem and they, they're building a GraphQL client. It's open source and it says, coming soon. I have actually tried the desktop app, which is another, uh, Tori app and it's really slick and it's got a lot of nice features, but it's, it, it was buggy when I was using it. It was like super early. I mean, it's not even released yet. So it's, it wasn't, I wasn't able to use it for my daily work, but there's one to watch out for. So now I've tried many different GraphQL API clients and I still haven't found the new insomnia. So I was feeling dejected. I was resigning myself to having to log in to insomnia every time I wanted to make an API call. <laughs> but then I saw this tweet from Greg Shire announcing Yak, a minimal rest and GraphQL client built with Tori apps. Okay. Now this is interesting. Could it be the King is back? So I, of course I downloaded it straight away, started using it. Now, the first thing you notice, it looks great. It's really, really minimal. It doesn't have sign up buttons. It doesn't have stars all over the place. It's simple. It's simple. So we choose GraphQL failed to right. It's, it's very early, right? So there's, there's weird bugs, but is it usable? So let's get rid of that and do a query. Introspection failed, it said. 
I've got the wrong URL. That's my fault. My fault completely. So are we introspected now? I don't see any suggestions. It does work sometimes though. So I don't know what's going on with that. So there's some, you know, there's, there's, there's issues, but I'll get to that in a second. Let's just try it out. ID, let's get the ID in the name. Boom, there we go. So yeah, there's, there's definitely issues with the introspection. Um, there are, I've run into a few different bugs. Uh, one other thing is like, I can't drag and drop these around. I want to sometimes order them in a different way or drag something into a, a folder or drag something out of a folder. So, so here's why I'm feeling confident about the future of this project, despite its rough edges at the moment. So last month, um, the Yak account said, we're working on minor updates with some fixes, anything you've found to be missing from the app so far. And I said, it would be great if it automatically handles cookies so you can like log into the admin API and then you can do another request uh, that's authenticated and it just works. You don't have to mess about with like manually setting an authorization bearer token. And then two days later, they've implemented it. It was released and it just worked. So it's this kind of responsiveness to the real problems that actual users are having, like really fast turnaround. Um, it just gives me confidence. And the fact that it's built by Greg, he's already learned the hard way about what to avoid. And I'm increasingly using Yak as my daily driver when it comes to developing GraphQL APIs. So let's see how the project goes. You can go and try it out, yak.app. That's Yak with two A's. Because it's Tori app, it's very small. I think the binary is like seven megabytes and it lo everything loads super fast. And it's available for Mac, Windows and Linux. So check it out. So I hope you've learned something from this video. Um, if you've got any experience with other clients that I've not covered, uh, please leave some comments. I'll, I can always make a follow-up and try out some of these things. Okay, that's it. See you next time.